Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how I make a catfish balloon rig. This rig serves a similar purpose as a slip bobber rig. It enables you to elevate your bait over structure that would normally get snagged up on bottom rigs like a Carolina or a Santee Cooper rig. And it allows your bait to cover more water with the wind or the current and your live bait swimming about. To make this thing, I'm going to need a bobber stop, two beads, two barrel swivels, a piece of string, a balloon, a slip sinker, a section of mono or floral that's lighter than the main line for the leader, and a hook. Specifically, I'm going to be using using a Gamakatsu 8-Aught Octopus Circle Hook. All right, I'm gonna kick this off with making the leader, starting with the hook. Now I make my leaders about one to two feet long, and it's going to be weaker than the main line. This is my main line right here. It's 65 pound test. This is 30 pound test. And the reason for this is, if this thing ever gets snagged and I have to break it, the only thing I'm gonna lose is the hook. So we're gonna go ahead and tie this thing on. I'm gonna tie it on with what's called an easy snell knot. There are three different types of snell knots. There's traditional, there's uni, and then there's the easy version. I like the easy version because it's quick. And like the name says, it's easy. Just so you guys know, if you prefer other knots like Palmer or a uni knot, you're more than welcome to use those knots in any situation here. I just really like snelling the knot. This is just my favorite type of knot to use with these circle catfish hooks. To do that, I'm going to thread my line through the eye, bring a good amount of line through. And then with the tag end, I'm going to create a loop on the back end of the hook like that. I'm gonna pinch it to keep it in place. And then with the tag end, start wrapping it around the line and the shank about 10 times. I'm gonna hold the tag in, make sure nothing comes undone, and then run all of that together, making sure that loop stays in place. Now I'm gonna take the tag in, run it through the loop, and then pull in the main line to close that loop. Bring all those wraps up to the eye, make sure they're good and snug. And then once I'm convinced the knot is good, I'll trim off most of the tag end. I like leaving a little bit of the tag end. It's not gonna affect the rig at all. So now that we got the hook tied on, let's tie on a barrel swivel. The reason I make the leader first is so I can use a palimer knot. If I were to tie this barrel swivel onto the main line, I would have to use something like a uni knot, which I really like. It's just a palimer knot's my go-to knot. To tie the palimer knot, I'm gonna double over my line like this, create a little loop that I will then thread through one of the eyes. And then with that doubled over line, make a basic overhand knot. It'll look like this. And then I'm gonna, with my right hand, I'm gonna pull out this loop a little bit and then thread that barrel swivel through that loop. And then before I pull this thing all the way tight, I'm actually gonna wet it with some spit so the knot slides together easier. And then pull in the main line and tag in to close the knot. Give the tag in a bit of a tug right here. And when the knot is good to go, I'm gonna trim the tag end. Now we can move on to the main line. The first thing I'm gonna do with the main line is create a bobber stop. If you're using any type of slip bobber rig you're gonna need a bobber stop because this thing ain't gonna work without it with bobber stops you can deploy pre-made ones like this you, these can be bought anywhere that sells tackle or you can make one from scratch which is what i'm gonna do with this one so to tie a bobber stop take a piece of string and then create a loop along the main line and then with the tag in wrap it around the main line and through this loop several times and once you've done that, it's going to look something like this. Begin to pull on both tag ends in opposite directions, closing that knot. And once you got it on there, slide it up and down the line to make sure it's good and snug. But before you trim the tag ends, what we're going to do is slide on a bead to make sure that the knot is going to stop this thing from sliding up the line. All right, so we got our bead on. Oh yeah, that thing is definitely not going anywhere. Now let's just say that what you tied the bobber stop and it was too small and your bead is sliding past it. That's no good. What you can do is either repeat the uh, bobber stop knot tying process or you can just tie a couple of overhand knots on top of it that'll thicken up the knot really good like this and once you've thickened that knot well enough to the uh so the bead doesn't go past the bobber stop you know you've got a good knot there all right so now i'm going to come in trim the tag ends now i'm going to make the balloon line starting with the barrel swivel and slide it onto the main line. And then make sure that the barrel swivel isn't so big that it slides past the bead and the bobber stop. So now I've got my barrel swivel on there, I'm going to tie on another piece of string. I'm gonna thread one end of the string through the other end of the barrel swivel. And I'm gonna do this using a uni knot. To tie a uni knot, create a loop with the tag end, line it up along the main section of line, and then run that tag end through that loop and around the line about three times. 
Once you've made your wraps, go ahead and start pulling on the tag end to close the knot and then pull on the main line to bring it up to the eye when trim the tag end. When determining what size of the balloon you'll use, it really depends on the weight that you're going to be using. If you're going to be using heavier weights, you can go with the larger balloon because it's not going to create that much drag. But let's say you're using a lighter weight, you'll want to make the balloon smaller so it doesn't act like a parachute, limiting how far you can cast the rig. I'm going to tie on the larger of the two balloons that I have using another uni knot. I like to make my balloon line somewhat short, no more than a foot. I usually keep it between six inches and a foot. I find if I make it a lot longer, I run the risk of having it getting tangled up in the rest of the rig, so that's why I keep it somewhat short. Next, I'm going to add my sinker and thread the line through it, adding it to the line. Now I'm going to add another bead. This bead is going to protect the knot that's going to tie the main line to the leader. The reason why I add this bead and why it's gonna protect that knot. If this sinker has direct contact with the knot tying the main line to the leader, it's just gonna be constantly knocking on that knot. And over time, as the rig begins to age, if it's just constantly pounding on that thing, it could weaken the knot. And if you hook into a really big fish, I'd hate to think that you're gonna lose it. That's why I add this bead as a protection for that knot. Now I'm going to tie the main line to the leader, again with a Palmer knot. Well, I started with the leader so I could do this. Thread the doubled over line through, make the basic overhand knot, make a good loop over here on the right and then pull that entire leader rooting the hook all the way through that loop wet the knot with some spit pull on the main line close the knot when i'm convinced the knot is good to go i'll trim the tag in and that's how i make a catfish balloon rig if you guys found this video useful and want to check out more fishing tips and tricks you can use on your fishing adventures i got a couple options you can pick from right here thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one